Hi everyone, let's continue our discussion with experiment design. So, last slide we covered the internal and external validity, which is very much related to this slide. We talk about the, the types of experiments. We have two different types. One is called laboratory experiment. The second is called field experiment. So laboratory experiment basically is that we conduct experiments in a control setting. For example, we will control the, the temperature, the lighting, and even layout of a lab to make sure that the, the uh, control group and ex experiment group have the same identical settings so that we can really uh, increase our ability to eliminate other cause, possible causes. And uh, that's why we, we tend, to, uh, tend to have the laboratory experiments because we want to have a higher internal validity. I mean, and then at the same time, laboratory is experiments are conducted in artificial settings, so uh, we have a lower ability to generalize across different settings, for example, uh, different populations or even different uh, geographic locations. So that's why laboratory experiments tend to have a lower external validity. On the other hand, field experiments are conducted outside the laboratory and usually in an actual environment, such as a marketplace. And uh, because it's conducted in the actual environment, we tend to have more confidence in its results in terms of its ability to be generalized because we think it's more real and that's why it has higher external validity. On the other side, because the field experiments are conducted outside the laboratory, we're left leaving lots of variables out of control, then our ability to eliminate other possible factors is reduced. That's why we have a lower ex internal validity for field experiments. I hope that you got this uh, two types of experiments uh, the, it, two, two types of experiments in term, terms of its internal uh, external validity clarified. It sounds kind of um, a little bit uh, complicated but uh, I think it's pretty much like laboratory and field experiments are in opposites with regard to its internal and external validity. So let's talk about the actual application by marketers of experiment design. So pretty much we talk about test markets. Test markets basically uh, we're referring to real-world testing of a new product or some element of the market mix using experiment or quasi-experimental design. So sometimes we just, before we launch a new product, we want to be 100% sure or at least based upon what we know to maximize our success rate of product launches. So we, we do some kind of test markets. Other times, we just want to test some elements of the market mix. For example, the promotion. Promotion, you know, we, we want to see what type of advertising message would be more appropriate or more receptive to our target markets. Other time, we would could, um, test the pricing strategies. You know, we can increase our prices or decrease prices, and we can do uh, test markets. 
And uh, we have four different types of test markets for our you know, real world testing. And the first type is called traditional or standard test markets, which basically means that we we use our traditional distribution channel uh, to test market a new product using whatever whatever we have, and you know just like uh, you sell an existing product, and the only difference is that we probably would. Uh, um, launch a campaign in the traditional uh, channel and then do the problem obviously is that uh, it takes a much longer time to see the results and also uh, its security is compromised because uh, your competitors might be able to figure it out you have something new in your traditional distribution channel in other words you your, you know, you tip off your competitors, which might invite some kind of uh, uh, subcharge for your test markets. And uh, the second type of uh, test market is called a scanner or electronic test markets. Scanners, we have two big providers. One is AC Nielsen and the other is information resources. They have a panel of consumers. Uh, I, I think we, we played some video before for you guys to take get us some sense of the scanner. And scanners, if you go to the Walmart, if you go to the Target, I mean, those, those are very, very commonplace scanners. The AC Nielsen or Information Resources, those the big two market researchers, they have a, a panel of uh, consumers that would uh, be able to uh, figure out how your product, new product, is received among the consumer panels. So this is actually pretty uh, standard. Actually, you know, very very uh, helpful to figure out the whether our new product would be. Uh, could, it would be uh, would be a success, but the problem is always being uh, it's it's uh, it's unrepresentative sampling. I mean, you know, you could have hundreds of thousands of uh, consumer panels, but uh, they could be unrepresentative of the marketplace. The third type of it's called controlled test markets, which basically that. You, again, you use the services of the market research firms like uh, AC Nielsen. The AC Nielsen would uh, uh, ensure that the product is distributed through the agreed upon types and numbers of outlets. And the research supply would uh, be able to uh, just you know, monitor the the sales of product in this control test market and they would be able to tell the clients uh, very quickly and a, you know, a realistic picture of how the sales going up or just by how much. So control test markets are pretty effective in terms of uh, uh, its ability to, you know, to accomplish our test market objectives. The fourth type of test market is called a simulated test markets. You know, the word is simulated, meaning simulation, try to, to uh, simulate uh, the type of test markets that previous three types. And in the simulated test markets, uh, you know, sometimes you use artificial environment like, like a market like a place, other times they would uh, offer some kind of uh, uh, some kind of the uh, s results, you know, the, using combined with mathematical models to figure out the projected sales, you know. So that's kind of like a, a really 
has ability to be able to get the results pretty quickly. And uh, let's look at some of the benefits of test markets. Why do marketers test market? Con uh, why do uh, mar uh, the marketers conduct test markets? The first reason is that you know using the results from the test markets, we can do some estimates of market share and volume. I mean, usually we have some kind of mathematical models try to see uh, what would happen if we launch the nationwide or sometimes regionally. You know. The second is that we want to figure out uh, how much can cannibalization gonna be happening to our existing products. Because you know like for example Proton Gamble they launch a new brand of shampoo and then they want to know uh, how much sale would be put away to from the existing product to the new product? This is very important to, for for the PNG to figure it out. Third advantage is that uh, we can uh, figure out what type of consumers would be more likely to buy our products. We can gather their demographics, psychographics, even geographic data so that we can uh, be more accurate in predicting uh, its potential sales if we launch it nationwide or regionally. Test markets actually we involve lots of costs. That's why it's kind of very expensive usually. Uh, it could cost, you know, if it's a, the big brand, it could cost you like hundreds of thousand dollars or even up to a million dollars. So that's why uh, test markets are not really typically used by small players. It's typically used by big uh, advertisers. You know. So if you look at the list, they have you know we need to advertising to let consumers know that we are launching this new product, and we also need to uh, manufacturers provide a point of purchase materials in a retail session. And then you know we also need to do sales promotion, do coupons, sampling, and uh, well, we we need people to uh, travel to different places, and you know, really those are very expensive. And also we need to pay uh, providers, service providers like uh, AC Nielsen, information resources for customized research. And again, uh, we look at the previously talk about a cannibalization, which is basically a possible diversion of sales from your other products, meaning that those are the kind of the, uh, just the cost uh, incurred for your test markets. Uh, and potentially, you get some kind of bad press or bad PR if experiment fails. I mean, those are the risks you are taking. Uh, again, uh, we talked about earlier about the tipping of competitors. I mean, that's that's a really worst nightmare if you you didn't know that uh, your competitor already figured out what type of new product you're launching, and then they'll do something. For example, they're gonna uh, decrease your their prices to uh, just uh, uh, try to stop people from buying your new product. And the last thing to talk about is the, uh, the sample results. Many people think that uh, uh, the test markets may not be representative of the population, and which is many times true, especially if you are using, like, say, scanner data. Uh, they are not that kind of representative. So that's all for the session on experiments. We conclude our part two, the video lecture for experiment design. See you next time.